Now, I would like to show you a little tune, which is going to be in D minor. It's a tune I wrote a long time ago. I think it was in the late 70s, as I was taking a boat to go from Normandy to Ireland. And in fact, I call, I call that, because I was on that boat going to Ireland, I called it Voyage pour l'Irlande, Voyage to Ireland. And so I'm going to play that melody for you with, with no bass at first, just the melody on the strings with using open strings as well. <laughs> It, 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 it looks easy, but in fact, I've, I've been using a few ornaments there. So I'm going to really go into those ornaments. See my right hand? I'm using three strings. I'm going to use three fingers. You hear those ornamentations, how I accompanize the melody, how I, I create um, undulations, movements in the melody, how I bring the notes. It's called ornamentations. And so how you ornamentate a melody is very important. Um, it's very graceful. And you can create a lot of differences in the familiarity of the listener how you bring a melody, how you can repeat that melody, but in fact you don't because you are going to change a few little details here and there based on those ornamentations. So for instance, when I do, I stay in the scale, I mean minor. So my ornamentations, like I do, is going to be a note of that scale, otherwise it would be in a minor, well, why not? For me, it's not, it's okay, but it's not what I want to do right now. I want to stay in that minor thing. This is called a liaison, a slur. One hit, three notes. Two, three, one, two, three. Hammer on, pulling off. the finger hit. Doesn't have to be always the same. See what I just did? In fact, I want to play the D, but I go through the D from the notes underneath in that scale, which is a C. So what I do is that I play those two notes together on two different strings, of course, and I get that. It's dissonant, because I have basically a, a, a all step in between those two. So what I do now, I'm going to stop 
pressing with my middle finger on the second bass string in the third fret, the C, and I'm going to only hear the D brought by the C. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Very keyboard like, very harpsichord like. You can do it on three strings. That's a very harpsichord way to consider the guitar, which is a string instrument. So. A very keyboard like way. Instead of to go from the C to D, you can go from the D to C. I do the other way around. Instead of letting the D to ring, I kill the D and the C remains. See? I play those two notes together and then my finger goes back on the on that D string and kills it. So you ba 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 with only one hit, huh? Pretty cool. This technique, this way to apprehend consecutive notes played together is called harp effect technique. This is something I developed on my own, not even knowing that, you know, in a, in a classical guitar class, people study this technique in the seventh degree of their study. I, for me, I, I played the piano for four years when I was from six to, to 10 or 11, and I always sort of and without even realize, realizing it, I always looked for a sort of very open way to distribute the notes of the melody onto the fact that they could also the notes could ring at the same time. So in fact, you know, let's take a scale again. You're going to look for, instead of playing a monophonic kind of scale where every note kills a note before, you are going to try to distribute the notes of that scale on as many strings you can so that you can hear a sort of, uh, you know, a polyphony of notes. And the right hand technique is going to be following the, the order of strings. made sure that the notes were ringing a lot and that I let all those open strings to ring together. Now I'm going to try to be more discerning and to have only two rings and the melody, the, the strings carrying the melody and have no other information else than that. So this is a completely different right hand technique in fact. The same fingers are used to emulate the sound and to stop the sound. They have a dual function, and this is very important that you try to remember that it's one thing to, um, to create a sound, but you need to control the life of that sound. And this technique is going to help you to get there. You see what I just did, for instance? When I play my second note, my first note, that third bass, stops because one finger comes and rests on it. That's the thumb. 
the sum here does that, but it could be the index. I'm going to apply the same thing. In fact, you see when I play the G, my A stops. See, you see what I do? I go back to my tune, and now I'm going to bring the bass into it. You remember the exercise we did at the very beginning with this arpeggio and the bass playing on the one, the bass playing on the second beat, on the third beat, on the fourth beat? It is to give your thumb a complete independence compared to the other fingers. Whatever the other fingers play, your thumb needs to be able to interact whenever, whatever happens in the rhythmic, okay? So this is what's happening here. I can choose to have a bass on the beat. What about now being a little bit more adventurous with the placement of the bass? Well, I'm reaching the end of this, uh, you know, meeting between you and this music and this instrument. I hope you've had uh, fun and enjoyed yourself. I hope it gives you the desire, the inspiration to really go out there, dive into it, and, you know, go into your laboratory and, and, and take all the time, be patient, take all the time to find a lot of different things that are going to emulate your pleasure emulate your, um, 
your your drive and momentum so that you, you, you want, in fact, to keep looking and looking for more and more and more and more. It's an endless journey, and I wish you the very best. I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye.